it's all your fault that this happened because you participate and when we sin and we release and we give and we participate and we fulfill the Great Commission, that's what it's all about. And it's such an honor to be able to do this together. And those taxis were real. Those horses were real. That's how they drive around. And, and I don't know if you saw that one particular bus where they were in there, but this would not pass any inspection <laughs> in the United States of America. <laughs> And, uh, you know, if they had a little accident, I mean, you would just be hitting steel. Remember when we traveled in that bus? It's just crazy stuff. But anyway, it's such an honor to be able to, uh, to do different types of things. Like this, you know, yesterday they gave away food. Um, we, this church is constantly reaching out and touching people's lives. And I'm so glad to be a part of that. Just turn to someone and says, I'm glad to be a part of this crazy place. <laughs> And uh, just, just to kind of, uh, you know, we, we, we always try to, to tell you what's going on in our church and in our community. And Mark and Jan, they uh, are, have been elders in our church for a number of years. They have uh, moved their business to Fort Myers, a uh, sterile area. They're buying a home there. They're moving in that direction. So we're going to bless them today. So if Mark and Jan would come. And I think we try to pick a really good picture of you guys. So... Uh, and just have them come up front. Um, and I'm just going to, uh, this is not easy for me, but I'm just going to say that these guys have been true friends. They've been supporters of our church for a number of years. They have helped me tremendously. The church, with finances, with uh, business decisions and so forth. And so it's been a true blessing to have them here. But if they decide to leave, we need to bless them and just support them. And I want everyone to say goodbye to them and just bless them. And we're going to pray for them. But I want to give you a chance if you want to say something. I just want to say that it's been such a blessing to serve Jesus in this place. I want to encourage all of you. Because it's a joy. And get involved. You'll love it. It's been an honor to serve here. Um, and mainly because Pastor Andrew is his heart, and we just love his ministry and his uh, his friendship tremendously. It's been a true honor. And I, I thought back over the past 10 years and some of the things that have happened and the changes that have happened and um, where the church has come in the past 10 years, and it, it really touched my heart especially to think back when Pastor Andrew first asked us to, to serve and help in the finance committee and we were literally with Elliot and uh, Christy and John handed what felt like two sardines and a crumb of bread <laughs> and we looked at it and we said what are we going to do with this but we chose to believe and we were able to truly participate in a miracle of the loaves and fishes and see Jesus take a very little and multiply it and now to leave with baskets overflowing is truly a blessing and to serve with the elders and everything that's gone on in here and stuff it's just been a true The elders would come, the elders that are here would come, I don't know if everyone's here, but if you are here, come. And then if you could stretch out your right hand, we want to do this, we want to bless uh, and just say thank you. And if you have a chance, hug them and love on them. I know we'll see them again. It's not like this is not going to be the last time because they just moved into Fort Myers. That's not that far away. So, um, but it does say to go into all the world and preach the gospel, right? So Fort Myers is included in that. <laughs> yeah. Father, I thank you. We stretch out our right hand of blessing to them. Thank you, Lord, for Mark and Jan and their life. Thank you for the blessings they have been, Lord. We are so grateful for the blessings that you bestowed upon them and through them. And we want to bless them too today. We want to, their lives to, to go forward with your favor, with your anointing, with your with your wisdom and guidance, Lord Jesus, we just believe that you desire to prosper them, to show them favor in every aspect of their lives. Lord, just bless their business, bless their lives, bless their home, just bless their marriage, Lord. Fulfill your purposes in them and through them. And most of all, let Jesus Christ shine through their lives. We pray, let the anointing of God rest upon them. When we send them out, 
with your favor. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, um, also just a couple of announcements we want to take care of, and, uh, and I know that you're aware of this, but uh, we're going to have a baptism uh, in uh, next Sunday. Next Sunday we're having a baptism, so I just encourage you to, we're going to have a great time at the beach. Do it. Do it. Do it. Can I say, can I say, seriously, did I mess it up that bad? All right. Only off a week. Will you forgive me? So, uh, pastors make mistakes too. Talk on it. I thought I was perfect. <laughs> so anyway, the baptism is coming up. Sign up if you want to get baptized. Also, Wednesday night, Thursday night, there's uh, Tuesday nights the, is the life group. Wednesday night has church. And Tony, you're here, and he taught last Wednesday. It was awesome. If you missed it, come this. Come on and share just briefly. Uh, Tony is going to bless you. Hey, good morning. Hey. So we are, this Wednesday night, we're going to continue our study on our identity in Christ. And when you hear that word identity, I want you to think of the word oneness. Our oneness in Jesus. And I think you'll remember I said, or hopefully you remember last Sunday, we said that whenever we have need, God always meets that need by showing us more of Jesus. And, um, and that revelation is not academic. It's, it's spiritual. It's transformative. And just a really very short story to illustrate that. I grew up in Macon, Georgia. I'm one of five kids. I'm the oldest in my family. I have a brother that's two and a half years younger than I am. And on his best day as a grown adult, when he has done all the stretching he can do, he's only five foot five. He's just a great heart but little guy. And he was even smaller when we were young. And uh, so we lived, in, we lived in, in Macon, one acre yard, and I was in the back, he was in the front. And one day, as I'm in the backyard, I heard Tim, I heard Tim crying for help. And then uh, intermingled with his crying, I heard several voices cackling and laughing and mocking. And so I ran around the front to see what was going on. And Tim was standing there, and he was trembling, and he had his fist raised like this, and there were tears streaming down his face, and he was biting his lower lip. And I said, what's going on here? He said, they're, they're trying to take my bicycle. And um, I was just the opposite of Tim. I did all my growing between 10 and 13, so I was a big boy back then. And uh, so I looked at those three boys, and I said, you're in our yard, and this is my brother. And all of a sudden, my brother, who had been just trembling, stood up and said, yeah, this is our yard. <laughs> And I'm his brother. And I said, and this is his bicycle. And I said, I'm going to give you the count of three to get out of this yard. He said, that's right. This is my bike. And you heard it, three. And I said, and if you don't leave, there's going to be a train wreck like you've never seen. So I said, one, two. And before I could get three out, Tim, and, and they are, their backs are turned. They're walking away. He, I said, one, two. He said, boom. And I mean, they just took off out of there. Well, here's what happened. You see, my brother, when he was aware of my presence, strength and courage rose in him. And because we are one, because we are one, he never doubted for a moment that his battle was not my battle and his fight was not my fight. When you understand who you are in Jesus, how much you were loved, it will transform your life. And you can't move forward without that realization. So that's what it's doing. That's awesome, isn't it? And actually, it fits right into the message that we're going to talk about today. So stand up with me. We're going to uh, just open up with our theme scripture from uh, Corinthians and just encourage you to be united in understanding the principles of God. I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ to live in harmony 
with each other. Let there be no division in the church, rather be of one mind, united in thought and purpose. <laughs> Father, I humbly come before you, but I boldly stand in your presence because of the blood of Jesus. Lord, I know that you are my brother. <laughs> we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And this is, Lord, our place. This earth is under your control, and we believe heaven is under your control. We believe all authority has been given to us in heaven and on earth. And we just declare victory today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Turn to someone and say, Victory! Love on somebody, and you may be seated. Thanks for blessing me there. Don't worry about it, Eric. So again, if we look at our theme scripture, I just want to catch it on the screen for you and just kind of be aware of it. We asked for you to circle certain words. And again, I want to say this right at the beginning. I, I appeal to you. I mean, this is God is so wanting to bless our lives and he wants to get our attention. He wants us He's, he wants us to be victorious in every aspect of our lives. And if we're not understanding certain things, we kind of get lost in the shuffle. We get lost in life. We get lost in our mind and in our attitudes and in our work and in our environment and in our family lives. And the enemy would like to cause us to be distracted. And God says, I want to appeal to you. This is Paul talking. And he said, I want to appeal to you, brothers and sisters. And that's what we are. I mean, you know, we're, and I wanted to say this, and, and so many, off, so often we're caught up in titles, we're called up, caught up in, 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 in certain authorities, situations, or we think that if I call ourselves apostles or pastor or teacher or whatever, but we are brothers and sisters in Christ. We are a family. And what Tony was talking about, about his brother, is that this is our family, tree of life, and actually in Collier County, there's only one church, there's only one family, and Jesus Christ is the head of it. Amen. And in the world, we have more authority, more power, more of God's grace in our lives than we can ever even understand. And Paul is trying to appeal to us to understand that in our lives. And so I asked you last week just to kind of circle certain words, and I said to you, we're going to deal with this. And I went through this all in, in, in many ways, but it says, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, to all of you who agree with one another, did we just skip something? Did we? Yeah, here it is. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say and do, very being one, no division among you, but that you may be perfectly united in mind and in thought. One of the things that I want you to notice about this scripture here is that I want you to see that all authority, it says, by the authority of Jesus Christ, I told you to circle that. I also talk, talk to you about circling harmony. I talked to you about circling that we are to have no division, that we should really be of one mind, and that we should be uh, of thought and purpose. We need to understand those. So today, my focus is really going to be on the authority of Christ in our lives, the authority of Christ in our lives. For us to be united, and I, and I remember doing this with the triangle, and we pointed down that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit coming down is, is, is such a powerful force that God wants us to understand, and then we connect to that force by us, body, soul, and spirit connecting to that. That's where you see the David star there, behind there, but it's kind of interwoven. It's not just that we, that we accept God, or that God accepts us, but we are one with Him. We are united with Him. And if you've ever noticed this about the Star of David, is the triangle is representing actually in many ways God and us being united in that way. And the cross is what has sealed it and has brought it into fruition for us in our lives. So I want to just kind of go through these scriptures a little bit here. The first one I want to go to is Ephesians chapter 1. And I would just like to read a little bit on, on, on this. It says, God has now revealed to us his mysterious plan according, uh, regarding Christ, a plan to fulfill his own good pleasure. 
So this is God's desire and God's mysterious plan has been revealed to us. Okay, let's read on a little bit more. And this is the plan. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. I want you to notice that God's intention is to bring everything together, united in him. And he has had that plan from the very beginning. And his desire is for us to be in him and for him to be in us. That is God's desire. And so if we read on a little bit more, the next verse it says, Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God, for he has chose us in advance and has made everything work out according to his plan. I, I don't know if this sometimes gets you or not, but God's plan is so powerful and unbelievably awesome, and yet sometimes we get caught up in our plans more than we get caught up in God's plan. We get caught up in thinking that we have certain rights instead of understanding the rights we have in Christ. Sometimes we get caught up in thinking that our problems, God can't solve them. Sometimes we get caught up in our struggle and in our pain and our disappointment, and we do not realize that everything has been taken care of. I want you to know that because we are united with Christ, we have received the inheritance from God. Now, I, I don't know about you, but if you were promised a billion dollars. See, we, we used to think it was a million. Now, now we want to deal with billions. We used to think a hundred thousand was a lot. But this is the idea here is God has given us a quadrillion inheritance in him. We are so blessed, and it is not, it's been bought for and paid for. We have been redeemed. It has been taken care of. But for whatever reason, we think it's for somebody else, but not really for me. And that's where we get deceived, and we need to understand the mysterious plan of God and the victory that we have in him. Let's go to the next scripture just to see it unfold a little bit. And this is in the same chapter, just a little further down. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power. I, I just want, I'm, I want you to, Paul is saying, I'm, I'm praying for you that you get it. He said in Corinthians, I appeal, I appeal to you. I, I want you to get this. The incredible greatness of God's power for us who believed in him. This is the same mighty power. Let's read on. That raised Christ from the dead, seated him in the place of honor, God's right hand in heavenly places. Now, we, we have no problem actually seeing it in God or in Christ. We can say that, yes, he conquered. He conquered hell, death, and the grave, yes, and he's at the right hand of the Father, right? We, we have no problem with that in some ways. Let's read on a little bit more. Now, he is far above all any ruler or any authority or power or leader or anything else. So if I can truly understand this, that God says now he is far above. There is no one Amen. who has more authority and has conquered everything and it's Jesus Christ. Amen. Or leader, anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. I want you to get in this world. So often we're worried, we're thinking about heaven, and God says, I've got it for you right here, right now. Amen. And he's communicating. Let's read on just a little bit more. God has put all things under, under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church, of us. That's us. For the benefit. It's for us that this has happened. Verse 23. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Now, let me just tell you what it says in the Bible. It says, we are seated with him in heavenly places. Amen. It's not just a, a theory. It is that where Christ is, we are. Where we are, Christ is. 
He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We'll get into that. Just, we sometimes just don't really grab a hold of this authority that we have. So when we're in a situation, as Tony shared, and we just cry out and say, I pray, Lord, help me through this. Jesus is in heaven hearing, interceding for us, and he's going, is somebody messing with one of my kids? Is somebody trying to take someone's bike? Is someone trying to? And he comes right around the corner, and he says, I'm going to give you to the count of three to get out of here. That's why he was, on, he was in the grave what, one, two, three days, and after three days, he conquered hell, death, and the grave. All authority has been given. There's not one. And it's not just in heaven, guys. It's on earth. It is on earth. So let's read on to the next scripture just to kind of dig into this a little bit more. Thank you, Tony, for just making all this work today. And Jesus came. And uh, this, is, this is one of the things we know that Jesus himself said at the end. He said, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. How many times do we need to hear this? This is Jesus himself saying it. Okay? All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Let's read on. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So he's saying, I want you to understand. I want you to be united. I am willing to give you all of me. Give all of yourself to me. That's where the authority is. When you are united with Christ, what God has joined together, no one can separate. Who can snatch anyone out of the hand of God? The authority of God has been given to us in such a powerful way. It communicates to us. Let's read on a little bit more. It says, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, I want you to notice, teaching them to observe all things. I want us <coughs> to receive this teaching today of understanding the authority that we have in Christ. That there is a united force. When I stand before you, Christ is standing before you. That sounds strange. But it's the truth. Because where I am, he is. And he is in heavenly places. So guess what? In heaven and on earth, I have authority because I'm in Christ Jesus. And that is the force that is with us. And, if, and, and let me tell you something. He wants to steal this. I mean, well, Joyce said the scripture, right? The thief cometh but to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to take that truth away from you. He wants to deceive you not to realize who you are in Christ Jesus. He wants to destroy and, and cause you not to know who you are. Your identity in Christ is so significant that you need to grab a hold of it. You are united. You and God cannot be separated. You're interlinked. This is one thing about the Star of David. If you notice it, you can't pull it apart. It's, it's, I, wish, uh, I wish I could, you know what I'm talking about. It, 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 is, it is put together in such a way that you can't pull it apart. Because God has made us one. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Let's go on to the, to the next scripture. In Matthew 20, it says, But Jesus called them to himself and said, You know that the rulers of this Gentiles lord it over them, and those who are great exercise authority over them. You ever notice how some people think that they have authority? And how they lord it over you? Okay? And so Jesus is talking about this as well. So let's read on a little bit more here. It says, Yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. Let's read on. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. He wants us to understand authority in a totally different way. And he models this to us. I mean, we, every Christmas we celebrate this. Where was he born? 
in a manger, not in a castle, in a palace. He didn't come to show off. He came to conquer in a totally different way. He didn't come with man's manipulative power. He came with compassion, with grace and truth. He came to conquer the one thing we could not. He came, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld the only begotten full of grace and truth. The word of God came to set us free from the deception of sin and darkness and death. That is what he came to do. He came to serve. And it sometimes freaks us out that somebody would care so much. He is willing to serve us. He's willing to give himself to us completely. He's willing to give his life as a ransom for many. He says, I, I'm going to give myself to you. And he's still doing it. He's not withholding. He's pouring out. He says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will send the Holy Spirit. I am promising you that I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'll go with you. I'll serve you in every situation, in every circumstance. Let me help you. Be the authority. And it doesn't come across from top down. It comes from the bottom up. He came out of the grave. He conquered hell, death. He, he said, all authority has been given to me. You know, we say, we, I said this last week just a little bit, about when some people were questioning who, who Jesus was, and Jesus said to them, who do you say that I am? Well, you know, well, you're Elijah. He was a pretty powerful man. He had a lot of authority. You know, dead people were raised, all kinds of stuff. Who do you say that I am? Well, you're a great teacher. Some say that. Then I say, who do you say that I am? Peter, he says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus says, flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you. You need to get this mystery into your heart and understand who he is. He says, upon that confession, upon that realization, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. What are you saying? I have authority over it says this, okay? And it goes on to say, I'm going to give you the keys. That whatever you bind in heaven, it will be bound on earth. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose will be loosed. I want you to know that all authority has been given and I am here to serve you and help you. Let's serve together. You know, I, I had this prophetic word. I don't, I don't know if I want to even share it. I want to just concentrate on this. We are not as Christian as we say we are. We need to return to brotherly love, Philadelphia, and we need to mount up like wings of eagles. And we need to really truly be Christians that are united with Christ, serving one another, loving one another, nice. caring for love one another, because someone is trying to divide. And God wants to unite. Do you know how quickly you can diffuse a situation by just serving? You have two choices. You can come into a situation and say, hey, what's going on right there? Or you can come, hey, how can I help? Hey, you need to be doing this and this and this. Or, can I, can I help out and do this and show you that I'm here to Where are you heading? support you? It's gone too far. You need to do this and this, Eric. Or, hey, listen, man, I, I, I struggle in the same area, and, and I just want you to know that if I can help you in any way, I'm here to serve you. Which one sounds different? Which one is supportive? This is what Jesus Christ did. He didn't come down from heaven, you bunch of losers. That's not what he did. Matter of fact, the Pharisees, they thought they had authority. They brought the woman, you know, who committed adultery. And he goes, oh, well, let's see how we're going to handle this one, right? Let's stone her. No. 
He says, you without sin cast the first stone. He came to serve. He bent down, got right down to this woman. Where was the guy? Because he committed adultery too. He was caught right in the middle in the act of it, right? I mean, sometimes we kind of get picky on how we choose sides, don't we? It's the woman's fault or it's the man's fault. Forget it. So he just gets down to her level and he says, where are your accusers? See, he has authority to say that. Who's accusing you? Go and sin no more. You're sin. <laughs> That's what we need to grab a hold of. Let's read on just a little bit more of some other scriptures that we have here. It says in 2 Corinthians, For we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who com commend themselves, but they measure themselves by themselves, and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. You like that one? <laughs> I'm bigger than you are. I'm more important than you are. I've been at the church longer than you have. I'm more successful than you. We're comparing ourselves with ourselves, with themselves. It's messed up. Let's read on a little bit more here. We, however, will not boast beyond measure, but within the limits of the sphere which God has appointed us, a sphere which especially includes you. So let's read on this last one. For we are not overextending ourselves as though our authority did not extend to you. For it was to you that we came with the gospel of Jesus Christ. What is it that we're here to do? Is we're here to serve one another. We're here to go into all the world and make disciples. Not dictators, not religious leaders. We are to make disciples that love and serve God and understand their authority that they have in God, that they can take off their outer garment, put on a robe, get down on their knees, and wash each other's feet. That's true authority. And that is something that seems to have been lost in some ways. My church is bigger than your church. You know, whatever. There is only one church. And Jesus Christ is the head of it. Let's read on a little bit more. Now this is how we're going to end today a little bit with Revelations. It says, there was a war in heaven. <clears throat> Let's talk about united. <clears throat> there was some conflict in heaven. And so what happened in heaven? Let's just read a little bit about it. Because, see, there's... There's conflict in all of our lives. So there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. Verse 8, it goes, continues, and the dragon lost the battle, and he and his angels were forced out of heaven. You know, there was the wrong attitude, the wrong desire. It says, matter of fact, it says in, in, in the scriptures, it says, I will ascend above the throne of God. I'm more important than God. I'm going to do this. I want to be important and significant. And God says, there's no room for you. There's no room for you. And so there was this conflict. And I'm going to tell you something, something in us also. We need to get rid of some stuff in our lives. Let's read on a little bit more. This great dragon, the ancient serpent, called the devil, or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world, was thrown down to earth with all of his angels. He was kicked out. So guess what? In heaven, he was not allowed. Is that true? In heaven, he was not allowed. If he's not allowed in heaven, he's also not allowed here. If he's not allowed in heaven, he's not allowed to be in your life either. The serpent, the liar, the cheater, the manipulator has no place in you. You need to let Michael and his angels and Jesus Christ, the victorious one, be your victor. Because whatever happens in heaven, happens on earth. Uh, is anybody excited about this? <laughs> Let's read on in verse 10. It says, Then I heard a loud voice shouting across the heavens. It has come at last. Salvation and power in the kingdom of our God and the authority of His Christ. 
For the accuser of the brothers and sisters has been thrown down to earth. Boom! <laughs> holy, 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 boom! Get out of here. You have no place here. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down to earth. No one who accuses them before our God day and night. Who accuses them before God day and night. Let's read on this next one. This is where it is. And they have defeated him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives much that they were afraid to die. See, I, I know that I'm not going to die. I'm not afraid. I ain't scared of that guy. He has no authority, no power in my life. Because Jesus Christ is my authority. I'm united in him. United in him. So often what happens to us is we go into battle forgetting the authority that has already been established. I appeal to you by the authority of Jesus Christ. Know that you are united with him. And nothing can separate you, and I will be with you even to the end of the age. I have all authority in heaven and in earth has been given to me. At the name of Jesus, every knee must bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus who did not consider himself to be important, but made himself a servant, humbled himself, and came. That's what we are to be. That's who we are. Let's allow that to settle right here, right now. If you would just bow your heads for a second. If you're here today and you know that you're not allowed to let the authority of Christ to rule in your life, Right now is an opportunity for you to be united with him. Right now you, you can say, I, I don't want to fight this battle anymore. There, there needs to be a battle going on right now in you to say, devil, liar, serpent, dragon, you have no place in me. You are kicked out of heaven, and I'm kicking you out of my heart, out of my mind, out of my will. If you're here today and you have not surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, today is the day where you can be in agreement with heaven. It has already happened in heaven. Let it happen in you. That if you need today just to surrender your life, let the authority, because he's accusing you, saying, oh, you're, you can't conquer this. You're not trying to conquer it. You're just trying to surrender to him. That's where the victory is. That's where the authority is. It's not in you, it's in Jesus Christ. The authority is in Jesus Christ and let Jesus Christ come into you. If you're here today and you need to surrender your life to Christ, just let me see your hand. Just raise it up. Be bold. I see that hand. I see those hands. Anybody else? Jesus Christ. Let's go. We're, we're making some disciples today. Because all authority has been given to us in heaven and on earth. Go therefore, and we've done that today. Stand with me. And those of you that raised your hand, just come and stand right here with me at the cross. Just come. Come. And even if you didn't raise your hand and you feel that you need to establish a couple of things, I'm just going to say to you, if you're kind of unsure about a couple of things, step into to step into and let God take care of that situation. Just stand right here with me. We'll wait for you. Right now, if there is a struggle that you're having and you need to step into the authority of Christ, just make that step and just come. You know why they call this an altar? Because that's where you get altered. That's where you get out of your mind and get into the mind of Christ.
got this young man that raised his hand and he's coming down the steps here. to you. It happens to me. It happens to all of us. You don't deserve to do this or you don't deserve that. We struggle constantly and the accuser of the brothers. But well, how do we overcome? By the blood of the Lamb. The word of our testimony is that I have surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. I'm a disciple of Jesus. I'm not following me. I'm following him. I'm not following the tree. I'm not following a pastor. I am following Jesus. Jesus is my authority, and it's in him that I stand, and I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. If the elders would come, if there's anyone who needs prayer, if you need agreement together, why do we do that? Because we have authority. The Bible actually tells us to call for the elders of the church, let them lay hands on the sick, let them pray for one another, let us confess our faults one to another so we can be healed. God has every intention for his authority, for his will to be done in our lives. Are you ready to sing? Come on, let's end this service today with just lifting up Jesus Christ. And after this song, you're dismissed.